if you've seen me on Instagram, you kind of know where I come from, where I go. Child of the 80s. The toys I make tend to be pop culture stuff, a lot of super weird stuff, nothing crazy sarcastic. I'm gonna make toys for as long as I can, as long as people give a crap about them. I think that's kind of what counts, you know? I think you're the keeper of your own time doing something. My name is Tim Sepulveda. I'm a wannabe toy maker, I like to consider it. It's not just toys necessarily, you know, I do make a lot of other uh, fun little things. I've done props and stuff like that too. Props aren't where my heart lies though, it's making action figures and anything that kind of resembles some modern pop culture stuff. Right now, I'm based out of Chicago. I live in Chicago in my small little apartment. It allows me to have my studio, but it's not necessarily the size of the studio I would want. That's the downside to it. So creating stuff has been a little bit tougher. I've had to shift gears massively. You know, that's been, just been super, super trying. You know, one of my buddies, um, Pete, who actually, you know, made these three right here. Great mask maker, Devil's Workshop, uh, also based out of Chicago. He kind of told me one time, he's like, I make stuff I would want to buy and I would enjoy making, and I kind of leave it at that. And I was just like, that's a really good work ethic. I, that's kind of how I've always run with it too, is like everything I make is something I would want to own. Like, I don't think I've actually ever made one piece that I don't find entertaining. I've got super dry level of humor, so sarcasm is like apparent in everything I do. But yeah, it's mostly three and three quarter toys. Some other objects, like Flight of a Navigator stuff, you know. It's kind of funny, I actually don't have a lot of my own toys. I kind of only make a couple and I tend to get rid of them and I really wish I didn't. I really wish I would make a backup copy for me. There's a long story behind why I started making toys. But yeah, it's been about three years, maybe three and a half. I've been doing commercial and film, smaller film uh, VFX for 16 years now. Graduated 05. It's a very complicated and hard industry to progress in and survive in. I've also done creative direction and I've done you know, all that stuff. You know, like I said, I've been in advertising for a lot of that time. So you get to learn how to pitch things, how to sell things, what makes things look right. So a whole bunch of that background, like really, really, really helped me progress in the toy making area. You know, dealing with clients, trying to work with bosses that necessarily don't have creative vision, but still want something creative. There's that battle. I still enjoy the industry. But 2018 was kind of like my breaking point where I needed to just step away from it. It was very financially challenging, trust me. And you go from having a paying job to trying to like scooch by based on who you are and what you can do and stuff like that. It's, you start to learn to sell yourself and make yourself appealing to people, you know, uh, based on reputation and stuff like that. I used to do some physical sculpting. Unfortunately, it's just way too messy for me. Um, that's just me. I still like working with my hands. I've got sculpting tools all over the place here. I've got my wax carving tools. I've got all that stuff. But yeah, from a mess standpoint to constantly kind of reassessing my studio situation, it just doesn't make sense for me to go full on. So I've been in the digital realm for so long now, it just made sense to kind of continue. It's just so natural to me and I catch on to it so fast. And my brain sees that ZBrush in such a clear way in my head that I can easily just be like, here's a reference photo, let's make this. So I can do design work, I do. All my packaging is done by myself, unless it's something supplied to me that I have to use for a license purpose. Yeah, but all my artwork is created by myself, Illustrator, Photoshop, hand-drawn stuff, you know, based off references, based off stuff in my head, whatever it may be. And all my toy stuff is completely created by me. Nothing's a recast. I'm not talking crap about anybody that recasts, that's your own thing, you want to do that for me. That's just not where my brain lies. My brain says I need to create it to be happy and be satisfied as an artist. If you want me to create the ship from flight of a navigator, you know, I mean, I created it for myself because I love that movie, but I have to figure out how to do that myself. There's not an existing model 
So I'll watch the movie, I'll keep referencing it, referencing it, referencing it, and eventually I'll nail something that I feel meets my quality level. Technique-wise, everything I do as of right now still is in ZBrush. Fusion 360, Blender, Houdini maybe, if I've grown up using computers. My art teacher in high school kind of let me stay out of doing normal painting and, you know, Conti Crayon and all that fun stuff. Um, sat me down with Photoshop. I don't even know what version it was, but we had like Corel Painter. We had Bryce 3D, if that's dating me even worse. But yeah, but technique wise, everything is all digital. Every toy is based off references. I base things off the movie, or if it's a TV property, or if it's pictures, or if it's an actor. Even if it's someone's friend, I've done birthday gifts for a local magician in Chicago that wanted a toy of his brother done for uh, the holidays. And so that was like, I had like two wedding photos. And I was like, oh Christ, like, okay, cool. Like it's, it's very easy once you kind of learn volume and stuff like that. But right now, most of my stuff, because I just do such low numbers of things, it just stays 3D printed resin. So there's a lot of engineering that goes into that, you know, I mean, engineering stuff. You know, I've seen other artists try to do stuff 3D printed and like, it just doesn't look right. Like it's, it's not a thing of being financially able to buy better technology because this printer behind me is not the best in any way, shape or form. I can't afford the best ones that I wish I could get. But it's just about knowing how to use it knowing how to approach um, setting up a file. 3D printed resin shrinks differently than normal smooth on resin. All that stuff has different rates it shrinks based on volume. If I make a real big piece and I try to have like an arm fit in there, that will shrink differently. So there's a lot of pre-planning that goes into all that stuff too. So it's definitely not easy, but I enjoy it. I enjoy every bit of the process. I enjoy manually putting supports on things and making sure they'll print out okay. But then once everything is 3D printed, then I will run in prime stuff, uh, run out to my balcony, because that's all I have right now is my balcony. One of my friends, Joel, is being nice enough to assist me and let me use uh, his garage as a makerspace, and I'm so grateful for that too. I got another friend, a couple that run Brick a Brack Records in Chicago that have let me use their space a ton too. Thankfully, just to help me keep going on some stuff that I had to leave uh, unfinished when I left my studio. But yeah, so once I finish the print, I'll run outside, uh, just do a quick rattle cane primer, then I give things about a day to dry. And from there, it's all hand painted. Everything is done via brush and hand painting. I used to airbrush stuff a lot, just due to studio space right now, and I don't want to die inhaling fumes in my place and I want to get my security deposit back out because like one day. A lot of my paint colors tend to be custom mixes so I've got to get a big enough wet palette going make sure I've got that color saved and I can keep going back to it every couple hours if I need to. Once it's painted then it all gets sealed it either gets uh, acrylic spray coated or varnished. The card back artwork that stuff just gets printed on my computer at home here. I don't go to FedEx. I don't use Kinko's. I don't use Staples or any of those places to do my artwork. I print on a normal Canon photo paper. I've got a process I've actually showed on Instagram how I do my card backs so they don't warp. It's all just mounted on, uh, I think I'm down here maybe. Yeah, so I just use a basic comic book backer. All that stuff gets glued to the front there. Once that's dried for a while, I go back outside and I actually do a Krylon, a clear coat as they call it, um, on top of everything. It doesn't make it glossy, it gives it like this nice uh, texture. If you have one of my pieces, you know what I'm talking about. The card backs tend to have like a little bit of like a grippy, gritty texture to them. Um, it's just a little bit of extra protection and I like the way it feels and looks. It's not, it doesn't look like photo paper where it's like super shiny and looks really fake like it's done on your inkjet printer. This actually makes it look a little more legit, I find. I don't collect as much as I used to. I've kind of learn to uh, minimalize the amount of stuff. I'm not a minimalist in any way, shape, or form. I think owning some stuff that makes you happy is really important. I tend to collect monster stuff. That's where my heart and soul has been since I was a kid. Monster masks, monster toys, Ghostbusters stuff. Ghost I'm a huge Ghostbusters nerd. I used to have my own, my own proton packs. I had like three proton packs, a couple traps, PKE meters. I designed my own, I printed my own. Ernie Hudson's autograph, my personal, made one. I got rid of my other ones. I have so much more pride in the stuff I make. Um, it's not an ego thing, it's just I made that, check that out, I'm very proud of it. Um, I kind of think that stems from a lot of stuff in childhood where you draw something really cool and you feel really great about it and it gets on the fridge or something, you know? I like really bad toys too. Got this weird Doc Ock. I don't like Marvel stuff. I'm not into comic books at all, but I really like the way this guy looks. Dick Tracy toy line. I loved these as a kid. I don't know why. They were weird. The proportions were horrible, I feel. His legs just were never straight. He wasn't okay. Yeah, vintage stuff. Old vintage monster 
you know, erasers and stuff like that. I don't know what year these are from. They don't say very much in them. I do collect some bootlegs. I've got a bootleg good guy Chucky doll. I have no idea where this is from. I don't know who the hell made it. It's cool as hell. Like the face pops off even. You know, it's just, it's good. It's weird. It's it's great somebody made this. It comes with a bat, some knives. These, these are all like hand cast by some person in resin. Um, it's got a switch on the back. It doesn't really work very well. <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese stuff I collect a lot of too. I really enjoy Chuck E. Cheese. Weird McDonald's advertising. Hamburglar stuff, Grimace. I used to work on McDonald's a lot. So I have like a weird like attachment to that stuff. Uh, not for many weird reasons, but, but yeah, like Universal Monsters, all that stuff, masks. I've got tons and tons of masks in my house. Really bad action figures that were made. I love collecting those. I love anything that looks like it shouldn't have existed, it was garbage. That's my favorite stuff. Do I have any advice for anyone trying to make their own toys? You've got so many different routes you can go with these days. I think you can go digital, you can recast stuff, you can do whatever the hell you want. You can do it out of clay, make one-offs out of clay. It doesn't have to be an action figure. No, I just, my brain goes to action figures. But even when I was at Monster Palooza, I had a table there and just seeing the range of talent it was so cool. Like everything's all over the place too. Like just because it's something you don't like doesn't mean it's not quality. Like there's toys that I would never make. I just don't find them appealing. But that person does and I really appreciate that person putting themselves out there, putting their artwork out there. I think that you know you have to be your own quality control. I think that's really important. The bootleg collecting community, there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't look good for me, I think. It's stuff I don't collect. It's not something towards the artist, but when I make my toys, I want them to look as if it's something you could have bought off a shelf. You know, my toys aren't articulated. I could make them articulated. I just choose not to for right now, just based on my studio situation and resin costs and silicone costs and all that stuff. It just gets really expensive. If you want to create something that you really love, go ahead and just do it. Just find a way, get some clay, get some sculpey, toss it in the oven, get some crappy board game painting kits. Those are always something I tell my friends to look at too. Like, don't go out and just buy like a huge paint set. It's not worth it. You know, go to like a local board game store, screw Michaels with their stuff. I prefer supporting the small home stores. There's a board game store up here I go to all the time. I will just go in and buy my primary colors. Or if they've got like a cool chrome I want to try, I'll go buy that. It's not cheap. It's that uh, Amazon's prices are way cheaper, but I'm not gonna do that. I would rather support the smaller place. Yes, that means I can buy less paint, but at least I know it's going towards, you know, the couple people that run the place. But yeah, that's my advice is do what you want and have fun doing it. And don't let anybody tell you you're doing it wrong. I'm gonna make toys for as long as I can, as long as people give a crap about them. I think that's kind of what counts. You're the keeper of your own time doing something. I've run through tons of hobbies before too and been like, ah, this is cool for a year and then toss off to the side. But I find toy making really, really interesting. You know, the fans that like stuff I do, I think that's even more what keeps me going. I've become really good friends with a lot of my customers, which is awesome. You know, it's cool when people are like, hey Tim, I got a question for you. Can you help me on this? You know, if it's another maker. You know, I really appreciate someone reaching out and asking me something. Um, because a lot of times I don't know what the hell I'm doing too. I like to think it's a whole bunch of people that have no idea what the hell's going on, but we're all doing it kind of right. I personally could never compete with the big boys. I mean, big girls and fucking big companies that are out there, you know, I think that's just not feasible for me at all. You know, I can do like 10 toys maximum. I have made the mistake of saying I could do 100 before, and I've wanted to punch myself in the face several times. That's definitely been a thing. I'm one of those people I don't necessarily like mainstream things too much. I'll watch it and I'll be like, that's cool. I always harken back and I kind of always go back to the same thing. I kind of always go back to the same couple movies, the same couple TV shows. They get, you know, my brain working, they get the juices flowing, the creativity flowing, even if it's not on the same topic. You know, I love chopping mall. Just because I love chopping mall doesn't necessarily mean everything I do is gonna be chopping mall. You know, my job would be to get a job in the toy industry. That's where I would want to be, but I don't know if I would be happy doing that. I just want to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Eventually, I want to start being able to make more of my own toys, not necessarily other IPs. Like, I think those are fun to do stuff, but I want to start creating more of my own characters. You know, and I want to eventually start getting this stuff made legitimately. Where can people find me? On Instagram, just Beta Toys. That's me. 
my life right now is probably like 90% Instagram. I do have a website, it's just once again betatoys.com. I just kind of post a little bit of the stuff I work on there. That's more for other clients to see kind of renderings and stuff like that about what products look like. Sculpting quality, it's easier to show on there than have them bother me for photos all the time. Sales wise, I used to have an Etsy store. I kind of stopped using that thing just because it, I just didn't like it. I didn't, I didn't get anything out of it. I don't like having to pay for listings. I don't like having to do all this stuff. I know I could Shopify, I know I could do all this stuff. I just find Instagram sales to be so much more fun. Um, I know not everybody likes them because not every, there, there is no perfect time to put a thing out there and be like, hey, I'm releasing a toy today, blah, 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 blah. You know, and so much, it's just, it's impossible to, you know, so much of that's just impossible to navigate, trying to find a perfect time uh, to post something. But most of my stuff I will post on Instagram. But honestly, so much of my work now has become random one-off toys for people, for clients, for whatever gift they want to give somebody. You know, it's a lot of my time for my personal projects has gone away and it's just all become commission work now which I'm super grateful for. So that does satisfy that, but I still do have time to release some stuff here and there once in a while. It's such a fun hobby and I really love doing it. I find it to just to be an absolutely amazing experience that I get to do this to some extent. You know, I'm very happy. I'm at the point in my life where I can do this. 